Okay, um, Mr. Haidu, I'm just wondering, uh, there's been a lot of talk still about rapid testing and, and uh, it seems like a slow launch on that. Do we have any update on when we're going to get rapid tests deployed more quickly? Um, we actually have uh, some arriving in Canada this week. If no, actually, they may even be here right now, and they're just in the process of being verified, and they'll be uh, deployed to provinces and territories over the next couple of weeks. Health Canada has actually approved five uh, so far, and uh, we're working with provinces and territories to make sure they have uh, the capacity once they receive them to deploy them in the communities. Right. This time in the spring, uh, uh, back in the spring, when we were on the trajectory that we are now, the country was short of panic. We were locking things down, closing stores left, right, and center, businesses, schools. Right now, we're still playing on the line of do we want to shut down or not. Do you think we're on a wise trajectory? Are you confident that with the level of openness right now, uh, we're going to flatten the curve again and go through the second wave? Well, it's early to tell. I know Ontario and Quebec, for example, have applied uh, specific measures to reduce their curves. BC actually did a while ago and, in fact, managed to successfully second, uh, flatten their second peak. Um, and, and I think everybody acknowledges that we're light years away in some ways from the first curve, at the first rise of coronavirus, and that we have a better understanding of how to treat the disease. We have a better understanding of the conditions that lead to uh, rapid acceleration of the disease. We know, for example, that very close quarters, close talking, crowded situations, the Japanese three C's really hold true and that they can sort of spur on super spreading events. And um, I think that we're in a much better place than we were uh, in March, April to be able to detect and trace uh, cases. So uh, the hope I think by all public health leaders and, uh, and indeed politicians is that we can be much more strategic and surgical in how we manage coronavirus right now. And I know that uh, public health officials and leaders at all levels of government are taking that responsibility very seriously because, of course, uh, if we have to take additional measures, we will. Sure. Thank we'll you. We'll try to see if we have any questions on the phone. Operator, est-ce que nous avons une question au téléphone? Thank you. Please press star 1 at this time if you have you a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez <laughs> étoile 1 pour poser une question. There are no questions registered at this time. Il n'y a aucune question enregistrée pour le moment. Parfait, merci. Hey, Minister Hyder, thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, so we hit 200,000 positive coronavirus infections. How hard is it for you to, to hear that number, that we've reached that new milestone in this pandemic? Well, certainly it's, you know, listen, I think any infection is too much infection, obviously, but I think, again, uh, t you know, these are cumulative cases that we've experienced. Um, the majority of Canadians that have coronavirus have recovered. Um, there are many other ways to measure uh, outcomes in terms of our trajectory. Uh, the numbers that I most closely watch, for example, are things like rising hospitalizations and intensive care unit um, admissions and, of course, deaths. And, and so, so I think obviously any case of coronavirus is one too many, but uh, in terms of you know country by country comparison, um, you know we've held our own in Canada, and and I would say that uh, all levels of government are working really really hard to make sure that we have a reduced uh, amount of spread and that we keep those infections at a, a level that are manageable by our public health care system. And finally, the, one of the conservative critics is calling for a committee to study you know, how the government is responding to the second wave. Do you welcome that, having your fellow MPs, you know, request documents, ask you questions? Is that something that you're open to? We've been fully transparent with the health committee since the beginning of the outbreak of COVID-19. I personally have appeared in front of the health committee a number of times, so has Dr. Tam and Dr. New and many other officials with uh, uh, Health Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada. The health committee will choose to decide how what they'll study, and of course they have the full independence to do that, but we'll always remain open with Canadians and indeed with parliamentarians about the measures that we've taken, uh, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and, and where we hope to go from here in terms of protecting Canadians health. Thank you. Thanks, Minister. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Can I just go? Minister Ng, thank you so much for speaking with us. Of course. Um, yeah, just, you know, you've been focusing a lot on recovery benefits mainly for small businesses, but you know, we've we've seen some problems with the Canada recovery benefit that was supposed to replace the CERB. Uh, is there anything you could tell us about 
you know, what your government is doing to make sure that, you know, the problems, the hiccups that we've seen over the last couple of days are going to be ironed out or, or fixed. I know this is not your portfolio, but, you know, it's one of the, you know, the flagship benefits that your government has ruled out during the pandemic. Is there anything you could say about the problems and maybe solutions that your government is going to be doing to you know, iron out the issues with it. Well, I think that uh, what I want to reassure Canadians throughout this entire time of the pandemic, our absolute focus has always been on helping Canadians get through COVID-19. We know how important it is to have the benefits and the supports that are needed, whether you are Canadians needing to have the additional support because you are not working right now, uh, or you're looking after a loved one, or whether you're a business that needs that direct support in order to bridge through this time we are seeing a second wave so our absolute priority will always continue to help support Canadians through this very difficult uh, crisis that is this global pandemic and so are the issues with the Canada recovery benefit has that been ironed out the error messages that people have been getting I know again this is not your portfolio but you know maybe if, if you can provide any information or reassurance to the Canadians that are having issues accessing that benefit well, my colleague, uh, the minister responsible, Minister Qualtro, I think would be very, very happy to uh, give you more details specifically about the program. But I certainly want to, on behalf of the government, uh, absolutely reassure Canadians that during this time of COVID-19, nothing is more important to us than focusing on you, focusing on Canadians, focusing on families and on small businesses to make sure that this, that critical support is available to them during this critical time. Yeah, thank you Good. so much. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much.